Today, I want to talk about the next major bank that will collapse as a result of this banking crisis. And actually, I want to be generous and give you the next two banks that are very, very likely to go under. I want to explain why these banks will collapse imminently and how that will impact you. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'm going to dive straight in with the key information. So, CNBC is saying that First Republic Bank, ticker symbol FRC, is most likely headed for FDIC receivership. The Cabessi letter has tweeted saying the stock just hit a new all-time low and is down another 40% today. First Republic has been absolutely decimated this week and as CNBC have said, shares of First Republic dropped sharply on Friday as hopes dimmed for a rescue deal that could keep the bank afloat. And sources have told CNBC's David Faber the most likely outcome for the troubled bank is for the FDIC to take it into receivership. Now, obviously, over the last month or two, we've seen the FDIC move in for both Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, taking over their deposits and effectively making customers whole while leaving the shareholders out to dry. So I guess the big question on everyone's mind right now is will First Republic Bank customers receive that same bailout deal? But before we get into that, it says the FDIC is asking other banks for potential bids on First Republic if the regulator were to seize the bank. Supposedly, First Republic is engaged in discussions with multiple parties about our strategic options while continuing to serve our clients. But really, I think that's just First Republic trying to avoid an all-out crash in the stock's price, as obviously these negotiations have been ongoing for over a month and have got absolutely nowhere. As Genevieve tweeted, she said, Investment bankers working with First Republic expect the government to take over. Nobody wants to buy it. The stock is down over 90%. The market cap is currently only $1.5 billion, and therefore right now it's effectively just a high-risk small cap company. First Republic obviously has a terrible strategy and a massive amount of unrealized losses, so large that obviously no other bank out there wants to take on that risk. Even though the stock is trading in the single digits, no other banks have even submitted an offer over the last month because they know that it's clearly worthless. And as Wall Street Silver has tweeted, it seems the bankers are trying to make a pitch to save First Republic by saying help us now or pay more later when it fails. As Wall Street Silver added, it seems they're trying to force a bailout, trying to convince the Fed to save First Republic now or pay more in bailouts when First Republic obviously fails. He's saying these executives took the risks and took the bonuses and now they're demanding the public saves them. And it seems the Federal Reserve, the Treasury Department and the FDIC are some of the government entities that have recently started discussions with financial institutions about putting together a lifeline for the struggling lender, according to sources. The report added that the government's involvement is helping bring more parties, including banks and private equity firms, to the negotiating table. It seems like the Fed may try and do what the Swiss National Bank has done with Credit Suisse and effectively stump up a giant amount of capital to sweeten the deal. Effectively, the government is going to have to handhold and create a public funded backstop for one of these institutions or one of these banks to buy out First Republic. Because it seems that without that deal sweetening, absolutely nobody is interested at buying First Republic at whatever price is offered. Now, at this stage, it says it's still not clear if the US government is looking to take part in a private sector rescue of First Republic, but I think the longer they leave this, they end up with no choice. Obviously, the more the First Republic stock continues to fall, the more shareholders are going to sell out and the more bondholders are going to try and redeem their bonds. Obviously, First Republic doesn't have that cash and they're already trying to pay out billions of dollars in customer withdrawals, which again is only going to get worse. And therefore, I feel if First Republic isn't placed into FDIC receivership this weekend and the stock zeroed, it's going to get significantly worse for all parties involved. So it seems like over this weekend, First Republic will be taken under FDIC receivership and the stock will effectively be zeroed. So if that is the case, then which bank after First Republic Bank is going to be the next bank to fail? Which bank can we profit off of by shorting? Guys, just a quick one, please be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell as it really helps out my channel. Well, as Jay Dornis has tweeted, he said, can we just call it out for what it really is? If $30 billion wasn't enough to bail out First Republic Bank, the United States banking system is in a terrible, terrible mess. As G-Man added, he said First Republic Bank got a $30 billion rescue package just 37 days ago. What the hell did they do with $30 billion in just 37 days? 
We know that First Republic has had some absolutely giant withdrawals over the last few weeks, and this isn't just happening at First Republic, it's happening at all of those regional banks too. And actually, one of the largest impactees of this massive wave of withdrawals is Charles Schwab. As Bloomberg has tweeted, they said with higher rates easily available elsewhere, Charles Schwab is facing dwindling deposits. So it seems that right now, Charles Schwab is actually facing the exact same problem that First Republic Bank experienced about last month. And this article says this week, the stock price of this financial services company fell so drastically that its founder and namesake lost roughly $3 billion of its wealth. Similar to Silicon Valley Bank, the Charles Schwab company has a sizable investment in long-term government bonds, raising concerns that it could experience the same cycle of stock sell-offs, declining stock prices, and panicky depositor payouts that contributed to the demise of Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank as well. And the fact that Schwab's clients are shifting their assets inside the bank's portfolio towards safer government-backed investments and even withdrawing entirely is one reason why investors continue you'd have concerns about this company. And you may remember from one of my previous videos, I also touched on the fact that Charles Schwab actually has an absolutely ginormous portion of unrealized losses on their held to maturity assets. The exact same thing that Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank had as well. Charles Schwab currently has around $14 billion in unrealized losses against only $8 billion of actual equity capital. And therefore, it's very, very likely the Charles Schwab Corporation could be the next domino to fall. And especially as Unusual Wells tweeted, they said First Republic Bank and its auditor KPMG have been sued by shareholders for allegedly overstating the safety of its business model. Clearly, First Republic Bank in its financial statements and many other of these regional banks were overstating the safety of these businesses. These businesses aren't actually 100% guaranteed to be safe and actually many of them are falling and collapsing. And as each domino falls, it makes the remaining dominoes in that stack significantly weaker. Finally, I think an excellent way to judge wider market confidence is to look at the stock sales of the CEO of BlackRock. As G-Man tweeted, he said, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, which manages $10 trillion in assets, has sold another 7% of its stock. And he said his last stock sale was 48 hours before the pandemic crash. If we look at Larry Fink's stock sales, he sold stock on the 30th of January, the 14th of February, both in 2022, and now again on the 18th of April, 2023. Clearly, Larry Fink does not have confidence in the current stock market and is therefore trying to sell as many shares as possible at a higher price as possible. It therefore wouldn't surprise me if over the next few coming weeks, we saw not just one, but multiple regional banks collapsing, causing a further stock market crash. This could effectively be a very fast and very sharp crash like we saw back in March of 2020. And I think a perfect catalyst for a crash of such magnitude and of such velocity would be not just one, but multiple banks collapsing. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.